Hey guys, Nintendrew here. Once again, I am back to talk about some of the rarest and most coveted titles in video game history, this time for the original Game Boy. In this retrospective, we'll be taking a look at the top five rarest titles ever released for Nintendo's flagship handheld. So, let's get right to it. First up is Toxic Crusaders. Toxic Crusaders is a side-scrolling action platformer based on the 1991 American cartoon series of the same name. The game also saw ports for NES and Sega Genesis, although each version has its own differences in levels, design, and gameplay. In this version, players choose between one of five characters and join the fight to protect their city from the evil Dr. Killamoth. Although Toxic Crusaders could be found for much cheaper as recent as 2016, collectors have started to take notice of its rarity and its current market value has skyrocketed to upwards of $100. The title itself was pretty poorly received, which likely led to low sales figures on top of an already limited print run. The game has seen less than 10 completed sales on eBay in the past year, so if you happen to come across it for cheap in the wild at a local game store, make sure you don't pass this one up. Next is F1 Pole Position. Now this one has an interesting story. Although it's flown under the radar for many collectors over the past decade, more recent listings for F1 Pole Position have been so few and far between that its price has absolutely exploded. The European release, in contrast, is fairly easy to come across, but the NTSC cart is a different story. According to my research, there may have been as few as three copies sold across eBay and Amazon over the past year. At the time of this video, Pole Position's current market value is estimated at $150. Despite sharing a name and promotional art with F1 Pole Position for Super Nintendo, which was developed by Human Entertainment, this release is actually an unrelated port of F1 Hero GB92, a Japanese exclusive title developed by Very. It's not well documented why Ubisoft decided to adopt the same label, but it's safe to say it made their marketing job much easier. At number 3 is Jimmy Connors Tennis. Jimmy Connors Tennis, as you might have gathered, is a tennis game featuring the retired world-renowned tennis player Jimmy Connors. And while its gameplay is nothing spectacular, this title is yet another striking example of the recent surge in the retro gaming market. Just a few years ago, in 2014, you may have been able to find a copy for under $5, but not anymore. Recent auctions place this title's value upwards of $170. What a leap. I've always been surprised to find a sports title in a console's rarest game lineup, but this seems to be a different beast entirely. Through all my research, I can't seem to find a concrete explanation for this game's enormous jump in value, but with less than 5 recorded sales in the past 12 months, it's certainly earned a place on our list. Coming in at number 2 is Spud's Adventure. Alright, this one requires a bit of backstory. If you've spent any time at all collecting for Game Boy, you're no doubt familiar with Acclaim's 1990 puzzle game Quirk, developed by Atlas. This title was originally called Puzzle Boy in Japan, and Spud's Adventure is a spin-off from this original title. Presumably in an effort to appeal to a more Western audience, Acclaim decided that they would take the game's titular potato protagonist and turn him into a tomato with sunglasses. However, in the year following Quirk's launch, Acclaim lost the license to publish the Puzzle Boy series, and Atlas released this title, Spud's Adventure, in its original and unedited form. Like its mainline counterpart, Spud's Adventure features puzzle mechanics, but it also throws in some action and RPG elements to keep the formula interesting. Today, the title sells for right around $200. As far as I understand, Spud's Adventure was not received super well, and I can confirm from personal experience that the game can be super frustrating, especially with its recurring theme of long winding paths that lead to dead ends and constant backtracking. Like many other early Atlas titles, this game saw a very limited print run, which certainly has done nothing to lower its value. And finally, the rarest title for Game Boy is Amazing Tater. Deja vu, right? This is the first time in this video series that we've seen two titles from the same franchise in a console's top five rarest games. Amazing Tater is a direct follow-up to Quirk, and was released in Japan as Puzzle Boy 2. If you played the original, it can be pretty jarring to see such a similar title at the peak of the Game Boy's rarest releases, but indeed, this little-known sequel saw a significantly reduced print run and minor notoriety within the retro gaming community, keeping its market value consistently high throughout recent years. So how much does it go for? Today, Amazing Tater can sell for a whopping $300. <laughs> 
If trends continue to hold, we might see this one continue to rise in the future. Quite a lot of cash to drop on a title which is basically a rehashed expansion of a very common game. But once again, Atlas has topped off our list and secured Amazing Tater as the rarest title for the original Game Boy. Okay guys, that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed this latest entry in my Rarest Game series. Of course, if you did, please do consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share the video with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks again for checking out the video and for making it all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed. As always, I've got links to all my social media in the description below. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, that sort of thing. And if you'd like to help out even more, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen. Otherwise, I hope you'll look out for the next video. Take care.